Next we're going to look at is this in 4.1 is how to graph exponential functions. So we're going to try to graph f of x is equal to uh, 2 to the x power. So just like we always do when we don't really know how to graph stuff, we're just going to try to plug in some values. So let's see if we can't do that. Well, the thing I always like to plug in first is 0. 2 to the 0 power. Some of you guys may tell me different answers on this. But anything to the 0 power is 1. So we're going to graph 0, comma 1. When you plug in 1, you'll have 2 to the 1st. And 2 to the 1st will give us 2. Now, as you can see, if I just put those two dots on the graph and said graph your function, you may think that would be linear. It could be quadratic. So... Yeah, we're going to look at some other examples. 2 to the second power will give us an answer of 4. Uh, which will be right there if I did my math, right? 2, 3, 4, yep, whoops. Okay. Okay, 3 be 8, so 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, even if I put those points right there, you might look at that and be like, whoa, hey, that looks kind of like it's quadratic. Uh, but the thing is, is, you know, quadratic, if you plugged in 1, you would get an answer of 1. 2 would give you 4. Uh, 3 would give you 9. So the numbers are very similar to each other. But exponential growth comes in when the numbers get larger and larger and larger. If this were uh, quadratic and x squared and you plug in 10, you get 100. But then if you plug in 2, 2 to the 10th power... So we get 1,024, and that's a lot different than 10 to the second, where you would get 100. So that's the concept of exponential growth, where it may look a little bit like a uh, nice little parabola at the beginning, but when the numbers get really, really large, you can see they're going to get a lot bigger. Uh, if you plug in 4, you'll get a nice little 16. Obviously, that's too high for our graph, so we won't graph that one. But then what we also have to look at is the negative values. So let's start with negative 1. Now it's been a little while, 2 to the negative 1 power. The way you can get rid of a negative exponent is you can do one of two things. You can move your base from the numerator to the denominator, and it'll change the sign of the exponent. Or you can take the reciprocal of your base. Either way, you'll get an answer of 1 half. Uh, negative 2, we'll basically have 2 to the negative 2 power, which would be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. And then negative 3. We'll give us, oops, meant to write a 2. 2 to the negative third, which would be 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. So hopefully you can see a little tendency here of your graph. There's our exponential function. And what you should see is as the x's get more and more negative, your graph is going to get closer and closer to the x-axis. And uh, that should be pretty common because we've just studied that in terms of our nice little horizontal asymptotes, which this graph actually have. Right now, this graph's horizontal asymptote is the x-axis. So what the concept is, is that as x, get, as x goes to negative infinity, as x goes to negative infinity, your function gets closer and closer to zero from the, in this case, positive side. So one of the characteristics, now as you can see, that characteristic doesn't hold true when you go to the right side, but as it approaches negative infinity in a graph like this, you will have a horizontal asymptote. All right, let's talk about some of the characteristics of a nice little uh, exponential function. For starters, your domain is unlimited. So we've looked at things that have a limited domain. Some of our rational functions had one. Uh, we've also talked about radicals have a limited domain. But the domain of an exponential function is all real numbers. And the reason is is that you can, you can take 2 to any power you want. You could raise it to the 7th. You could raise it to the negative 30th. You could raise it to the 1 half power if you wanted to. Your range, though, will be limited. So our range is going to be from 0 to infinity. Now, 0 is actually not included in this set, and the reason is is because even though our graph gets closer and closer to 0, it's never going to be equal to 0. When you look at a rational, uh, or a, yeah, rational number, 
The only way a rational number could be equal to zero is if you get zero in the denominator. But when you take the reciprocal, you actually are going to have one in the numerator all the time. So that will be your range. Uh, let's see if there's any other. Oh, it is increasing the whole time. So it's going to increase from negative infinity to positive infinity on this one. It's been a little while since we've done increasing, decreasing constant. And right now, that's about all the characteristics we're going to look at. This is a nice little rational function.